Hi there, and welcome back to Sot and Brain Hub. My name is Calvin, and today we'll be rapidly reviewing brain injuries. In this video, we'll progress through the various anatomical regions of the brain and outline some of the key clinical findings that may be observed when they sustain damage. This damage is most commonly caused in all regions by a variety of conditions such as stroke, head trauma, including traumatic brain injury, and various neurodegenerative processes such as dementia. Let's start with the frontal lobes. These lie at the front of the brain, anterior to the parietal lobes and superior to the temporal lobes. Each frontal lobe is generally considered to have several distinct divisions. These include, but are not limited to, the motor cortex, the prefrontal cortex and Broca's area which assists in the production of speech. The frontal lobes are particularly responsible for higher level thinking, elements of personality or social interaction, and cognitive skills such as planning, multitasking, and performing risk assessments. Injury to the frontal lobes can correspondingly result in personality changes, difficulties solving problems, decreased impulse control, and generalized confusion. The parietal lobes sit near the top middle section of the cerebral cortex, just behind the frontal lobes and above the temporal lobes. Near the front of the parietal lobe lies one of its main regions, called the somatosensory cortex. The main function of the somatosensory cortex is to process sensory input from the rest of the body, as well as the surrounding environment. Additionally, the parietal lobes play a role in assisting memory, cognition, speech and reasoning. Because of their role in sensory integration and language skills, damage to the parietal lobes can have a broad range of consequences. For instance, damage to the right parietal lobe can cause visuospatial deficits, such as neglect and visual inattention. The patient may also have difficulty finding their way around familiar places. Damage to the left parietal lobe may disrupt a patient's ability to understand spoken and written language. They may, for instance, find great difficulty in naming common objects. The occipital lobes, located in the rear portion of the cerebral cortex, are primarily responsible for visual functions. This is the part of the brain where visual information is processed. As such, the symptoms of occipital lobe damage include various visual defects and other issues related to perception. One of the more severe complications is called cortical blindness where there is partial or total loss of vision in an otherwise normal appearing eye due to occipital lobe injury. The temporal lobes extend superiorly to the sylvian fissure and posteriorly to an imaginary line called the lateral parietotemporal line. The middle cranial fossa forms their anterior and inferior boundaries. Some of the most important areas of the temporal lobe include the limbic system and Wernicke's area the latter being a region of the brain associated with the understanding and processing of speech. The function of the temporal lobes mainly revolves around hearing and selective listening. They receive sensory information, such as sound from the ears, and are key in allowing us to comprehend or understand meaningful speech. Their involvement with the limbic system means they are also associated with motivation, emotion, learning and memory. As a result, temporal lobe damage can result in a range of clinical symptoms including receptive aphasia owing to damage to Wernicke's area, memory problems, agitation and irritability. The cerebellum is located at the base of the brain, directly behind the brainstem. One of its main responsibilities is to fine-tune and coordinate voluntary movements, essential for maintaining balance, muscle tone and posture. The cerebellum also has a primary role in coordinating the movements necessary for walking. The cerebellum is crucial to several other functions, including cognition, language learning, eye movement and reflexes. Although cerebellar brain damage is relatively rare, its effects can be quite serious. Because of its location, it remains fairly protected from external forces, so damage often occurs due to anoxic brain injury neurodegenerative disorders, or infection. Alcohol abuse can also cause the cerebellum to deteriorate. Cerebellar damage can result in tremors, 
nystagmus, ataxia, coordination problems, slurred speech, and hypotonia. The brainstem is located at the base of the skull and connects the brain and spinal cord. The brainstem is responsible for functions that are vital in supporting human life and is made up of three distinct sections. Firstly, at the top of the brainstem rests the midbrain. This structure plays a large role in muscle movement, particularly that of the eyes. Secondly, below the midbrain lies the pons, which plays a role in controlling balance, the sleep-wake cycle, and various other sensory inputs. Finally, at the bottom of the brainstem is the medulla, which oversees essential life functions such as breathing, heart rate, and swallowing. Additionally, with the exception of cranial nerve 1, the olfactory nerve, and cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, all other cranial nerves emerge from the brainstem and are thus also prone to injury. Brainstem damage is rare, with most injuries resulting from swelling in other areas of the brain, causing the brainstem to compress against the skull. Injury can also occur after a brainstem stroke or a diffuse axonal injury. Damage to the brainstem can result in abnormal breathing, cranial nerve deficits, loss of consciousness, and pupil changes, as well as swallowing issues. In more severe cases, brainstem injury can lead to full paralysis and death. Before we finish, it's important to point out that the examples we have run through display the symptoms elicited by more severe examples of brain injury, for instance, by a large stem occlusion or major trauma. It's important to remember that oftentimes, the injury to a particular brain region may be more minor and that only fragments of syndromes are observed. Also noteworthy is that cortical lesions tend to lead to subtle changes in behaviour and are rarely life-threatening, unlike lesions to the brainstem. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to like it if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and others related to the anatomy of the head, neck and brain. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.